Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Um, over the course of the Easter long weekend, uh, we saw significant compliance uh, within the South Australian community in relation to the restrictions that are imposed as a result of the directions under the Emergency Management Act. What we were seeking to achieve was to limit all non-essential travel and as a part of that we instituted directions that removed some of the incentive for people to do so. As you'd all be aware, um, there was a cluster in the Barossa Valley uh, just over two weeks ago and there were significant concerns as a result of international tourists from the USA and Switzerland travelling through the Barossa Valley and visiting wineries that an outbreak uh, which had been identified had the potential to be much worse. This required swift action and swift action was taken to restrict the potential for people to uh, contract the virus by being exposed to those locations where these tourists had visited. What we did to achieve that was we issued a direction under the um, non-essential business and other gatherings direction that precluded wineries from trading from their premises. This meant no sales, uh, no food, no other produce could be distributed from their premises. However, they were able to trade online and deliver those produce items to their customers. No customers were allowed to travel to their venue. As a result of our lead up and considerations uh, to the long weekend, we also issued two directions to two separate businesses to achieve the same result. Having reviewed those directions and looked at the circumstances as they relate to South Australia with the level of interstate and international travel essentially having been stopped through other directions and other controls. A reassessment was undertaken and consultation with the Chief Public Health Officer and as a result of that consultation and determination it has been determined that we are going to slightly relax the restrictions on wineries and enable them to trade from their premises. This will still prevent people from actually enjoying or consuming items on the premises. There will be no consumption of food or other produce, uh, but they will be able to attend those premises and purchase from those locations. We see this as a, a slight relaxation of the imposition so that these businesses can continue to trade as they would like to and as much as possible in the current circumstances. And it is a recognition of the fact that so many people did the right thing over the Easter long weekend. In accordance with the changes to the directions as they relate to wineries, we're also withdrawing the two directions that were issued to two separate businesses in the Adelaide Hills prior to the Easter long weekend. The decisions that are taken in relation to these directions, we appreciate the harshness that they have on businesses and the community generally. Uh, they are not made lightly and they are done with the intent of slowing the spread of the virus in the South Australian community. So far we have seen excellent results as a result of people's willingness to comply with those directions and we are continuing to monitor the directions that are in place now. At this point in time, there is no determination or decision that would see any other directions relaxed at this point in time, but they are being reviewed regularly. The circumstances that relate to the wineries direction are quite specific to that particular industry, and this now brings them in line with all other cafes, hotels and other premises that serve food or beverage across the state of South Australia. So that's the, uh, the reason for gathering today, and I'll take any questions. Thanks. Have you received any personal correspondence from businesses, wineries or breweries? Well, I understand that uh, South Australia Police has received correspondence from uh, some uh, two breweries. Uh, no wineries have sent any correspondence, um, but I have not personally seen that. This was a decision that was made in the normal course of our review of the directions. And it's interesting to note that when we issued the direction for wineries, uh, over 1,000 businesses were required to change how they operated and we haven't had any criticism or complaint as a result of that particular direction and I think that's to be commended that the, the, the wine industry had embraced the necessary restrictions in the spirit that they did. Have you made this change because of the issues that were raised by the breweries in the hills over the weekend? No, this, this is a part of our regular review and looking at all of the circumstances as they unfold in South Australia and looking at the cumulative effect of the various uh, directions that we put in place. A big factor in this was the fact that uh, reducing international and interstate travel into South Australia by tourists um, has had a significant impact on the volume of people travelling to these areas and we think that we've achieved the outcome and the Chief Public Health Officer has advised us that this relaxation is appropriate in the circumstances. Were the directives issued to the practising point of the right directives to be issued? I'm confident that the directive that was issued to the two premises last Thursday were lawful and appropriate in the circumstances. Are you concerned about legal action? No, not, not at all. The, um, 
The decision to issue, issue those directions was not taken lightly. Uh, we consulted uh, and got advice both from the Chief Public Health Officer and others and made those determinations in accordance with the circumstances. I'm still confident they were appropriate in the, at the time and that they were lawful under the uh, Emergency Management Act. Do you have some sympathy though for businesses like the Prancing Pony who you know, may feel like they're doing the right thing? They might not be clear on what, what's right and wrong under these circumstances. But I certainly sympathise with all of the businesses that are affected by these directions, and it's, it's not just breweries. Um, as I indicated, over a thousand wineries had no notice whatsoever that they were required to cease trading from their premises, and they did so with an understanding of the intent and what we were seeking to achieve. There are uh, nail salons, gymnasiums, uh, health spas, massage uh, services, uh, physiotherapists, dental surgeries. There are so many businesses that are adversely affected by these directions and it goes to every decision is how necessary are these and what other options are in place before we make these decisions and we certainly appreciate the impact we're having on businesses, on their employees, on the community generally. Um, it is a very difficult decision to make in some circumstances but one we are making based on the best advice available with the best intentions of reducing the spread of this virus. But do, you, do you understand that it's can be confusing for some individual businesses as to whether they're, how they're impacted, where they fall in terms of the definition of what a winery is, but it can sometimes be confusing. Well, we appreciate the confusion that can come from these directions. They are produced um, with as much advice as we can obtain and they are done in relatively quick time because of the need to act swiftly to prevent uh, an outbreak from becoming worse. Uh, we do provide advice and we make ourselves available to provide clarification where possible and some of the, the questions we are receiving uh, result in further amendments to those directions so they become more clear or we re remove any ambiguity. So we are listening to what people say but uh, that doesn't remove the need for us to make these directions as, in as quick a possible way to ensure that we reduce the risk of a spread of the virus. Given that the pricing pony is a brewery rather than a winery, uh, can you explain why the actions that were taken are consistent with the directive that was given that hadn't specified breweries? Uh, the intent of the direction was to eliminate the potential for people to see those as a, a destination on a long weekend to get out of the house uh, with nothing else to do and perhaps go for a drive and visit the Adelaide Hills regions and take the risk of potentially spreading the virus. So that was the, that was the foundation of that decision. But given that that was the intention, that the directive, the, the actual words that were issued to these businesses, were that it was wineries and that other businesses were able to uh, continue to provide takeaway as long as they weren't having people on site. Uh, are you confident that, that, is, that, that the actions that were taken 100% followed the directives that were ordered, even though wineries or breweries weren't included? Uh, I need to break that one down. Can you, go th can you do that again? Sure. Well, you mentioned that the intention yes. was to stop people going to the region. However, given that breweries weren't singled out in the directive and they were following that guideline that was issued to other businesses about only providing takeaway, not allowing people yep. to be on site, are you 100% confident that, that those actions that were taken by Safehold are 100% sound, given the directives that were ordered? I am... I'm confident that the actions taken last Thursday were appropriate in the circumstances and I'll go so far as to say that had we had more time and further ability to consult with the uh, industry representatives that the original direction as they related to wineries would have been more encompassing and would have included many more um, alcohol producing facilities within South Australia. Is this a gateway to relaxing other restrictions? As I've said, uh, we've assessed the current circumstances in South Australia and all of the directions are regularly reviewed. The review of the direction in relation to non-essential businesses as it relates to winery has taken into account the fact that tourism, both international and interstate and even intrastate, has virtually dried up. It, it just doesn't exist at this point in time. So the desire for people to travel to South Australia to visit our wine regions, as attractive as that is, has been eliminated. So this small concession enables these wineries and other businesses to trade to their local community and to um, maintain some capacity to keep their businesses going as much as we can afford them at this point in time. Are you able to provide an update on how many fines and cautions have been issued with regards to quarantine? 
Uh, I don't have those figures with me at the moment, but we can circulate those straight after. Um, we are continuing to visit people and ensure that they are complying with their quarantine obligations and self-isolation obligations, and we are visiting businesses on a regular basis. I'm pleased to say that the non-compliance issues we identify with businesses are not as a result of a deliberate intent to disregard their obligations. It is about them making best endeavours to comply, but with further guidance from police and understanding exactly what's required, they then accommodate those requirements and are compliant. So I think that's a, a testament to the, the general community approach to this. The same as people who are required to self-isolate or self-quarantine are doing an exceptionally good job of complying with that. And most of the time we visit people, we, we give them advice uh, or a warning and we follow up with uh, an expiation notice if we see that we're being disregarded in terms of providing support to those people. And what's the most outrageous excuse an individual has had to not be self-isolating? Well, I haven't had direct contact with the police who are uh, standing on our border checkpoints or visiting people who are uh, being vis uh, checked for compliance. Um, so I don't have that specific information, but I do know that the the tolerant approach that we're taking um, means that for a person to be issued an expiation notice means that they are completely disregarding our obligations as a community to protect those more vulnerable vulnerable people within the community from this virus. And talking Over about the cross-border travel direction, is there criteria for an essential traveller too broad? Well, there are concessions that allow people to travel into South Australia and not self-quarantine for 14 days. The bulk of those are people who live very close to the border and transit across the border on a regular basis for their normal daily activities. And then there are those who are transporting essential goods and services into the state and people who provide an essential service to industry within South Australia. Um, there's no, no real likelihood that we would ever be able to prevent that type of uh, tra uh, transport or um, travel into South Australia. We need that for our community to continue functioning. So uh, it does appear that 50% of the people who cross our borders, either by air or by road, um, are deemed to be essential travellers, but we have police officers there checking their, their credentials, their, their bona fides, and ensuring that their claims are appropriate. Um, with regard to the 12 fines and 7 cautions that we handed out over the Easter long weekend, are you able to provide any more of a breakdown as to how many of them were maybe individuals or businesses or, or anything in that regard? Uh, we can provide that breakdown, I just don't have it. I know a very small number relate to businesses, most of them relate to individuals. And I'll say it again, businesses across the state are doing exceptionally well in trying to adhere to the restrictions. Uh, we appreciate that, we understand how hard it is for them to continue trading. Um, and we appreciate the fact that when they are approached by police, they listen and adapt and, uh, and then comply. Final questions. Sorry, one question. Just on another um, subject, uh, some, a man turned up to court yesterday. Um, he had flu-like symptoms. His partner couldn't attend court because she also had flu-like symptoms. Um, there's been some criticism and some questions about whether police could do more to notify people when they're arrested of their obligations under COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, look, I, I don't know about the specifics of that case, but I can say that we are working very closely with Corrections and the Courts Administration Authority to ensure that there's a minimal traffic flow into the Courts precinct. We're using uh, video uh, conferencing to uh, conduct bail hearings and minor matters, and that has reduced the flow significantly. Uh, I'm not aware of any particular complaint about uh, lack of communication to people being arrested. Can I ask you what affects... Uh, COVID-19 has indirectly had on crime rates, particularly violence mm. rates in the community. Are you seeing less trauma? Uh, it's quite, a, it's quite uh, pleasing to see, uh, for the wrong reasons, that we have a reduction in crime in South Australia, uh, generally speaking. Um, assaults and other offences of violence uh, seem to be down. Uh, we've had a reduction in people's homes being broken into although we have seen a corresponding increase in some uh, business premises being broken into, so we're targeting some resources towards that to try and mitigate that and protect those properties that are left vulnerable because people are no longer operating them the same way they were before. Are you seeing any crime hotspots at the moment? Uh, we continually monitor crime hotspots and we deploy our police to those hotspots on a regular basis. That's a daily activity for us. I don't know if this is one you've been briefed on, but are you concerned about the carjacking um, overnight at, uh, at a Hungry Jacks, the man whose car was... Oh, absolutely. That's a, a terrible crime. Uh, we've had a, a, an innocent person had to receive treatment as a result of uh, another um, offender breaking into their car, um, stealing the car, and I'm pleased to say that that person's been apprehended, uh, but that doesn't make it any less serious, and uh, we're hoping that that individual uh, recovers from the minor injuries that he has.
I think Thanks, mate. Last about, question. I think it's concerned about police safety at the moment, and has there been... Police, sorry? Police safety at the moment, and has there been any directives to uh, stop single officers patrolling? No, we're continually monitoring the safety of our officers. The, uh, the instructions at the moment are quite clear that police officers conducting general duties patrols and other uh, general work are not required to wear personal protective equipment at this point in time, but we are continuing to monitor that. If the disease... Um, had a, a greater impact on our community, then we would revisit that at, at that time. But uh, officers are not being directed to work solo unless that is the normal way they operate, such as motorcycle police or others. So at this point, um, with the instructions and information we're providing our workforce, I'm confident they're able to do their job as safely as possible. And sorry, has there been any increases in any areas of crime at this point? Uh, well, actually, uh, pleasing, pleasingly, uh, we've had no... Uh, observed increases in domestic violence reporting. Uh, we are watching that very closely. I think it's probably more of a phenomenon that we will see if there was a total lockdown and we were forcing people to stay inside. That's not something we're having to endure at the moment in South Australia and I'm hopeful that we don't have to go there. Uh, as I mentioned, um, there, there's a slight increase in relation to those unattended businesses that are being targeted by parasites in our community and we'll be doing the best we can to capture them. Drug activity? I uh, haven't got information on drug activity. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. See you.